In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to import in a flat relief model and unwrap it onto a column. We'll walk you through the process of importing in the flat 3D model into a rotary session, and then we'll show you how to toolpath it so that you can create the part that you see here. So for this demonstration, we're going to need to create a new file. And this job is going to be a rotary job. And the idea of this demonstration is to show you how to take a flat 3D model and wrap it around a surface. So potentially you could wrap it around a column or even wrap it around a table leg or something like that. So our job size is going to be equal to the cylinder of material that we have on our CNC machine. So in this case, we're going to have something that's 12 inches long and the diameter is going to be four. Of course, our units are inches. We're going to zero off our cylinder axis, which is the most accurate way of doing it, um, unless you have a perfectly machined or cut cylinder, then you could zero off the surface if you wanted to, but you're going to want to choose which one's best for your job. In our case, the cylinder axis is perfect. We're going to set our XY datum to the bottom left position. And the way our machine is set up is that we are actually going to cut along our X axis and we are going to take our Y and actually wrap it around the cylinder. So this is the option for us. Now, if you don't know which way or which option you should choose, you could have a look either um, at contacting the manufacturer of your CNC machine, or you could just take a physical look at it and you should be able to tell which axis is being wrapped. We're going to use a very high resolution and then we're going to use Canadian maple as our appearance and we'll click OK. Now, just so we can understand what's going on, let's go ahead and tile our views and have a look at our actual material block that our software has set up for us. So you can see here, there's our material block. It's 12 inches long. The depth from the center out to the edge is two inches, but two plus two is four. So that's the, the four inches that we have in our diameter. And then our four inches has been turned into our circumference, which down here in the corner, you can see that our circumference is 12.5664 inches all the way around. And that's pretty handy to know. And we can visualize what's going to happen next. So we're going to need to now import in a 3D model. So we're going to do our modeling tab and up here to our import in a component or 3D model. If you navigate over to your import and unwrap rotary 3D model files, you'll see you've got a floral drop STL. So this was created in another piece of software. It's not a native file format. Um, so when we click on it and we say open, our software will automatically open up our orientate 3D model because it knows it's not a native file that was created in our software. It's made a good judgment call here on whether it's a full 3D model or a flat model. If you look at what a 3D model would look like, that's not exactly what we want. So it's the flat model is what we're looking for. We can go ahead and change our initial orientation. So right now this is the top. We can go ahead and cycle through these if you wanted to one at a time until you find the one that suits your job. For us, it's gonna be the top. We're gonna to rotate this 90 degrees that way it's going to sit on our x-axis, the right direction. We don't need to bother with any of our interactive rotations. This is perfect the way it is. And we're going to actually going to have to scale up our model, but we want to use as much of our x dimension as we can. So we're going to change our x-axis to be 9 inches long, and we're going to make sure that we have our ratio locked. That means all of these will be scaled up, our z and our y will be scaled up the same amount so we're going to go ahead and go nine inches there and you'll see in our 3d view it's already been updated and if we're happy with that which i am i'm going to click ok now we're going to be given this error warning and it's going to suggest that we should actually add in a modeling plane so that our model won't be distorted and we're going to do that and i'm going to show you in a second what would have happened if we didn't do that. So let's just click yes. And then now in our 3D view, you'll see that we have our wrapped surface with our 3D relief added to it. 
Now, like I said a minute ago, I want to show you why it was important that we added in that modeling plane. So if we go over to our tool paths and we have a look at our material setup, we're not going to look at anything except for our model position in our material. So we brought in our, our model and we did um, scale it up a bit. We ended up having a modeling thickness of about a half inch. So we're going to make that exactly a half inch just so that we can better illustrate what's happening here. Let's we'll hit apply. Close that down. And we're going to push our model way back up to the surface again. So in this little 3D representation of our cylinder block, we'll see that we have our model is the light beige and the actual core or the center of our material is the darker brown. And so we have a gap at the bottom. So the gap plus the model thickness equals two inches, which is half of the diameter. So if we go ahead and slide this slider down a bit, you'll see that we're adding more gap at the top and our model gets distorted a bit. And the more we give a gap, the more our model is going to be distorted to the point where if we had told it not to put in a modeling plane, that's what we would have seen. And that's not what we wanted to have at all. So we're going to make sure that we push our model all the way to the top of our surface. And that looks really great. And we're just going to click cancel for now because we don't want to deal with anything else here right now until we get around to creating our tooling. So the next thing we're going to want to do is we want to add some coves to this to each side of our relief model. So if we go back over to our modeling tabs and we're in our drawing tab, we're going to go ahead and draw a polyline. We're going to draw it from right around, oh, let's go right around here all the way down to here. Okay. We're going to right click to get out of that. With that line selected, if we hold down our Control, Shift, and H, it will copy that across their job, which is great. And we're going to use these two lines to make a profile cut to create a cove with a really big bull nose and mill. And we'll see that in a second. Let's go back over to our tool pass tab again. Let's just go ahead and retile our views. Let's go back to our material setup again and make sure that everything is okay. So the diameter is four inches. We've set our X and Y datum to the bottom left. Again, we're using our center of our cylinder to set our zero. And we've pushed our model all the way up to the top. And this all looks perfect. Oh, need to make sure that's all the way to the top. We're going to set our rapid Z gaps and our start home position to be safe and appropriate for our machine. And this looks pretty good. We're just going to change this to be a quarter inch for us. And we're going to click OK. Now we're going to run three different tool paths. We're going to have a 3D roughing pass, a 3D finishing pass, and then a profile cut to put in our coves. We're going to start off with our 3D roughing. We're going to need to select a tool. This will bring up our tool database. We're going to select a quarter inch end mill. We're going to check to make sure all these settings are safe and appropriate for our machine. And they are. If they weren't, what I'd do is I wouldn't edit them back there. I'd go into my edit here and edit them temporarily for this tool path so I wouldn't be messing around with my default settings for my tools unless I knew that it was always going to be that way. We're going to use our model boundary as our machining limit. There won't be any boundary offset. We don't want to go outside of that any. We're going to leave a slight bit of material behind. That way, if we have any chipping that happens with our roughing, um, it won't hurt the surface that we're going to need for our finishing cut. And also, it'll leave material behind for us to remove with our finishing pass. We're going to go ahead and do um, use a Z-level roughing strategy. And we're going to make sure we go along X. We want to go up and down our x-axis. Now if we change this to be along the y, then what would happen is we would actually go, we do one rotation and then it would go the distance of our step over and do the next rotation and so on and so on. On our machine we prefer to do it along the x so it's going to go up and down and up and down. We don't need any ramp or plunge moves. We're just going to call that 3D roughing and we'll go ahead and calculate that. 
And when we calculate that toolpath, it's actually calcul calculating as a flat toolpath and then wrapping it around our cylinder. And we'll see that when we go to preview this visible toolpath, you'll see that we're previewing it flat and then it'll actually wrap that around our material. And that looks pretty good. If this doesn't look right, then this is your opportunity to go back in and to adjust your tooling to make it correct. If it's not correct in the software, then it certainly will not be correct on your machine. Let's close this down. The next one we're going to do is a 3D finishing pass. Again, we're going to select a tool. This time we're going to choose a 1 8 inch ball nose. Again, we'll check all of our settings over. And if we want to change them for this specific tool path, we'd go into edit and we'd be able to adjust our tool appropriately. We're not going to do that, so we're just going to click Cancel. We're going to use our model boundary again. No boundary offset. We have a choice in our area machining strategy. We're going to choose raster, and we're going to leave our raster angle at zero for the same reason why we chose to machine along our x-axis when we did our roughing. If we change that degrees, then we're going to end up going around. If we change it to 90, for instance, we end up going around and around and around. Or really we want to go up, step over, or step over, and then go back again. With our particular setup, that's the best that we, we can do. So we'll rename our toolpath, then we're going to go ahead and calculate that. And this will take a bit of time to calculate because the toolpath is much more dense than before. We want to be able to remove all of that extra material we left behind from our roughing pass to reveal our details that we have. And again, this toolpath is being created on a flat, and then it's going to be wrapped around our cylinder. So when we go ahead and preview that, you'll see that it's going to do the finishing as a flat, and then it's going to bend that around or wrap that around our cylinder. And I'm really happy with that, so that looks great. Let's close that down. Let's go to our 2D view and hold down our Shift key, and we're going to grab these two vectors. And we're going to go into a profile. Now this profile, we're going to start at a half inch because that's what the model thickness is that's sitting on top of our cylinder. And we're going to go down a quarter inch. We're going to select a tool. We're going to use our half inch ball nose end mill. Select that. We're going to cut this on the line. We're not going to do any separate last pass. We don't need to add any tabs in. We're just going to go ahead and do a profile cut for these coves. We'll rename that. We'll hit calculate. And then we will preview that visible toolpath. And there we have it. Now we can just go ahead and hide our material block. And we'll see what we're going to end up with in the end. Now I'm really quite happy with that. I think that would make a nice little decorative post. I think it looks really quite nice. So now that I'm happy with that, I can close this down. I can save off the tool pass, making sure that I choose an appropriate post processor for it. And in this case, if I go down and look at the Mach 3 posts, you'll see that they have a wrap X and wrap Y component to it. We're wrapping our Y, so we'd want to use one of these wrap Y to A posts. And that way, our flat tool paths will be saved off in a manner that our CNC will know that it needs to actually cut it around a cylinder of material, not as a flat model. That's where all the magic happens, is when you save it off with the proper post that knows what to do with it. So let's pretend we save those off. Let's close this down. And with that, that concludes this demonstration. We're going to go up and we're going to go File and Save As. And we'll save this off into your tutorial folder so that you can go back in the end if you would like to and have a look at it. And maybe even once you check all the settings and so on, um, cut this on your machine. And there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. And until next time.